Hi, I'm Aidan from the Kami Customer Success Team, and today we'll be talking through some of the ways in which you can use Kami for remote learning. Uh, so we know that there are a lot of schools out there who are, you know, potentially going to be, you know, either shutting down or making preparations to shut down. And we know that there are a lot of people out there looking for uh, potential solutions um, as a way to facilitate students working remotely. So I'm just going to cover how to use Kami and Google Classroom to achieve that. We won't be going through all of the tools um, or all of the technical details. Uh, if you want a more in-depth overview of how to use Kami and Classroom and all of the tools, uh, we've actually got a webinar link in the description, which should cover that in a bit more detail for you. So uh, over on my screen, we have two windows that have been set up. One is set up as a student and the other is set up as a teacher here. And as the teacher, I've gone in and created two assignments ahead of time to sort of give you some flavor for some of the exercises that you could possibly run with your class. So the, uh, if I go through here to the classwork tab, we'll be able to see this in a little bit more detail. So I've got two assignments, uh, close reading A and close reading B. Close reading A is an independent uh, assignment. So each student gets their own copy of the work and then they open it up and complete that using the Kami tools. So uh, that's the first assignment. So the first one here is the students go in, they uh, read the attached reading, uh, the excerpt here, and we've highlighted some questions that we want them to consider. We then want them to use the highlight and underline to sort of engage with the text a bit more to try and answer those questions and ideally take some notes uh, using the text or voice comments. Uh, and then we're going to use that to facilitate an in-class discussion later on in the week. So for that in-class discussion or, uh, you know, out-of-class discussion, essentially, uh, we're, um, we're going to use just the comment tools and we're going to be uh, facilitating, you know, large conversations uh, in the um, in the margins of the page uh, to go over these questions, how everybody approached them, and um, yeah, talk through some some big ideas. So, so that's sort of the flavor of what we're going to be covering. Now, I want to show you just uh, briefly how you can create each of those here. So, to create an assignment that is individual copies for each student. Uh, first, we just want to go to uh, the Create button, and we want to click Kami Assignment. So for both options here, you want to click Kami Assignment. And we need to select uh, a piece of work to push out to the class here. So if I go in and select something here, Once we've selected a particular resource, uh, we are, let's move this down a little bit. Uh, so we will have this little drop down here that will allow us to specify how that resource gets pushed out to the class. So uh, for individual copies, that will be the default option that's selected. Uh, in order to have the basically all of the students in the class on a single file collaborating together, like we're going to do for exercise 1B, uh, that's where we would use the second option here, where all students share a copy. There is a, uh, you know, a third alternative uh, that you can use here. So if you wanted to have groups of students each working together, you could then have one assignment for each student and uh, each of the student groups in the class and then specify the group members using the drop down here. Uh, yeah, so I'm, we're going to go off the uh, assignments that we've already created. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over to the student side and we can open that up. So we're going to go in here and switch windows. So we're jumping over to the student side now. And we can see that we have this exercise, this first exercise. When we look at the Your Work section, we see this Aiden student, which is the name of my uh, student account here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This will give us the open with Kami button. This will only appear at the top when you have the Kami Chrome extension installed. Now, clicking on that will open up the work in a new tab. So just for note that uh, this is accessing the file from the student's Google Drive uh, that will automatically be placed in the Google Drive when it's been created in uh, an assignment using that method. Now, uh, we could go through, you can see that I've already put, so we put some highlights on the questions. I've also put some highlights on the worksheet just to give you an idea of what we might, 
you know, might, the kind of thing we might be doing in this exercise. One of the things that I've also done ahead of time is put in these extended comments. So uh, I've put in a, a video comment here. So you can find that option under the comment tools. Uh, there are video comments. There are also audio comments and so voice comments down here. Uh, so we can record just our voice if we'd like. Uh, so this is a way that uh, I recommend putting in uh, extensions to the written instructions uh, in a lot of cases. So if there's something that you want to refer back to that we've discussed previously, or if you want the students to have some kind of, when they go away and do this work on their own, or when they you know, are referring back to this for exam prep, uh, that's one really good way that they can uh, they can sort of refer to those those notes that you've that you've given to them. Uh, so yeah, that's that's one use that I find for this. Uh, we have a number of options under here though. So we've got the text comments. So text comments. If we just either click a static point on the page, we can create one of those. We can just type into this our notes. Uh, there is also the option to click and drag over specific text if we want to. Uh, have this comment be anchored to this text on the page. So, you know, as we sort of mentioned earlier with the instructions, we want the students really to be going beyond just highlighting the text and we want them to actually start to engage with it and sort of ask themselves questions about how this, how this quick particular question relates to the ones that we're going to be answering later on. Uh, there is also a voice typing option in here. So one concern that a lot of uh, teachers have when they have students who have particular accommodations uh, is, um, you know, what to do when, you know, they're working on their own. So we have a number of tools in here uh, for assistive technology. So we have a voice typing tool on the, uh, on the text comment. We also have those on the uh, text boxes here. So if you refer just to the second from the right option, uh, up on the tool on the toolbar for the text box there, uh, that this will appear this uh, this toolbar when you have clicked into one of these uh, one of these text boxes. So that's uh, that's the comment tool. That's a text comment tool. Uh, we can also take voice comments as well. So that's the kind of thing that we recorded as the teacher. We've got the video comments again. We've got an example of that up here. That will just take what's happening through your webcam and record it when you uh, when you create one of these. And the last option here we have is the screen capture comments. So these are probably the most useful for uh, adding in instructional content for the students I've found. So I can't actually demonstrate this one for you, uh, creating it, because it will actually interfere with the screen sharing. Uh, I'm on a Chromebook, and Chromebooks don't allow you to do multiple screen sharing uh, at the same time. So what I've done is I've actually created one ahead of time. So if I scroll to the bottom of this document, uh, we should have some text for it waiting for us down here. So you can see this little physics problem that we did. And if we look at this video here, uh, if I click, you know, click the play button, it will start playing. We can also make this full screen. Um, so we won't watch the whole thing, but just to give you an idea, I was basically using this. Okay, so if we go in here with the drawing tool, basically using this as a way to explain this particular problem here. So we started off without a drawing. I'm going to go ahead and write out this problem. So we'll start by writing out the variables here for this. And from there, we can go and actually add in what those variables are. So in this case, we're going to go one meter and two seconds. So to work out the velocity for this, we just need to take our equation and substitute those variables. And we could go on, but uh, yeah, I think you get the idea. So uh, we can record up to five minutes with any of these extended comment tools. Uh, so that's a really good way, you know, if you want to, in addition to using, you know, maybe something like Hangouts or Zoom to have sort of a live classroom, you can also record these clips so that the students are able to refer back to that when they're not synchronous with you. So, uh, yeah, that's that's one good way that we've, we've seen the comment tools used as well. Also, if you don't want to record your own videos and you have maybe, you know, a YouTube video that you really want to include as a tutorial for this exercise, um, you know, I know a number of resources that are really good from YouTube that we might want to, you know, attach so that the students have ready access to that. 
So if we add in a, a comment here, so I've actually done this uh, up at the top here. So if we take this link, so I'm just going to copy this again so I can show you. Click out of here. So you can see that when we insert a, a YouTube link, it will actually give us this little interactive window down here. So if I click this, I think we're live again. <laughs> there we are. So yeah, that video will play in this little space. You can also, again, make that full screen if you want to. So this is really nice if we want to put multiple resources supporting uh, this document. Uh, that's something we can very easily insert in. Just note that this embedded video uh, option only works for YouTube links at this stage. So yeah, just uh, to do that, you just need to make a text comment, paste in the link, and then when you press enter, it will auto embed uh, the content. Great, so for this individual assignment, when the, uh, there are obviously other tools that they can use to complete the work, we've got text boxes, we've got drawing tools, shapes tools and the like. If you want to learn more about that, just refer to the video below. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to, just before we turn in, I just want to show you what the teacher sees from their side. So for example, if I, at the very top here, let's say I put in uh, some content here. Maybe we want to make this... So we're going to make this in bold so the teacher can see that nice and clearly. If we jump back over to the teacher side now, even though we haven't turned in this work, all of the changes that the students are making on the work will actually show up on your side as well. So you're able to check in with students if, if we wanted to do sort of like an individual intervention with them. Um, that's the kind of thing that we could do from this window here. So just give me a second. Let's refresh this page. I need to make this full screen so we can actually pull these up. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the student's work. Make sure that we're in the right assignment. There we go. So you can see that the uh, the assignment's here. I'm not sure why that wasn't showing up. Now you see this little grade with Cami option here. So when this is ticked, it will actually allow you to use the Cami tools within this grading space. And that's what allows for us to do sort of real time collaboration together. So you can see that comment that I put in, you know, just under a minute ago, that popped up here uh, straight away. And if I were to submit a reply to that, so if I click, you'll notice any comment that has been made, you're able to submit a reply to. You can reply to your own comments as well if you have a series of notes to make. Uh, so for this, we're going to uh, respond. That seems to be the problem. And you'll notice that this is actually uh, going to give us, so we have, in this case, desktop notifications enabled. Um, and if we go over to the student side, we can now see that that's popped up. So this shows up within a few seconds of you making an annotation. So you can do very, very close to real time uh, sorts of interventions with students. So you could be working with individual students jumping in here with those same tools that they have access to. You can you know, respond to questions. You can help them uh, with particular problems uh, if needs be. So that's great. That's for individual students. So we're going to go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll switch gears here. and We'll jump over to the group assignment now. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up from the student's end. And I believe that is the, this one here. No, sorry, I'm just obscuring this window with my, with my little thumbnail here. So I just need to click the right one. Here we go. So this one here is an in-class discussion. So you can see that this is just the original file name here, indicating that we're looking at a shared file. We haven't got any annotations on this to start with. I've just started off with a blank document uh, this time. So we're going to go in and click Open with Cami. Give 
give that a chance to load. And while it's doing that, we're gonna switch back over to the teacher side and we'll open this up from there so that we have both users on the same document together. Now, I only have two students in my classroom course um, that I'm able to sort of jump back and forth between. So obviously you guys will have a lot more students in your classes that are on one file at the same time, uh, but this should hopefully sort of give you an idea of, of what that looks like there. So I am gonna go and open this up. And in fact, I've got to move this little window out of the way here so that I can show you uh, these two user icons that are at the bottom here. So we have uh, one user, um, both users have a little green dot next to them, which indicates that we currently have this file open uh, and we're both looking at the same document. So that's really good to check that everybody's on the same page, uh, especially when you're not in the same room together. So I'm going to start this off as the teacher and uh, we're going to make a comment here. I'm going to put this in bold so that the students can uh, see this. So if you press control B, that will put the, the word, the text into bold. So what's about setting in this story? Okay. So we've put this comment in here. The student's just gotten a notification that that's taken place. We can scroll in and if we click, if we mouse over this, uh, this question, we can then submit our reply here. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, start some kind of discussion here. So part of the story, because this is about the protagonist, correct that spelling there, reflecting on early life with their brother, with their brother. Notice the details he gives. And then we could we could go on from there. We can we can respond to this from the teacher side. We can we can put in another thing. Um, which details, you know? And we can and we can have a number of users participating on this uh, comment thread all at the same time. Um, so you know this really allows you to lead those sorts of discussions. And then if there's a point that you maybe want to get across you know, not in text, but maybe, you know, just speaking directly to the students, that's where you could use, say, a voice comment. Uh, students can then respond to those. Uh, and then we can, yeah, use whichever comment tools are going to be the most appropriate vehicle for getting your point across. Uh, and both students and teachers have access to these same tools. So you've got a lot of options for how to collaborate. Uh, so hopefully that gives you a, a, a brief idea of how to do this. Um, if there are any other questions about that, please message us on support at Kami app. And if your school is currently considering, is, is looking at a, uh, shutting down, we are actually offering at the moment uh, free Kami licenses uh, for a school for the, uh, for the duration of your shutdown period. Uh, so if you are needing you know, a solution uh, for that, please let us know. We're happy to help. Um, we know this is a strange time. So yeah, just please um, get in contact with us. Our email address is support at kamiapp, K-A-M-I-A-P-P.com. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more content like this. Uh, and also, uh, you can keep up to date with the latest changes uh, and announcements uh, on our Twitter feed. Our Twitter handle is usekamiapp. Have a good day, guys.